When I first started out as a teenager, I very much wanted to be a pilot. That from the moment I sat in the cockpit, I knew that flying was my absolute dream and my, my passion. And that's what drove me for so many years, and, and I loved it. And the more I flew, the more I realized I, I loved the technical side of flying and the scientific side of flying. And so to become a test pilot was the second sort of stage in the dream of becoming an astronaut. And uh, it was when I was a test pilot that I saw the, the space agency, the European Space Agency, hold this selection process to become an astronaut. And I just thought the idea of being able to take the skill set that I'd uh, developed and acquired up until then and to be able to use that as an astronaut in this international environment, this multicultural environment, working with cutting edge technology, working with some of the best science that's going on in, in the world today. What a privilege. And, and it was really for me just wonderful to, to see my dream come true and to be able to, to be an astronaut. Looking out of the cupola window from the International Space Station for the first time down on planet Earth was a very special moment. It was one that clearly I'd thought about, I'd looked forward to. Uh, any astronaut who goes into space knows that that's going to be one of the, the greatest things that they're going to see. And it didn't disappoint in any way. It, what surprised me were a, a number of things. Firstly, how thin the atmosphere is. So you get 16 sunrises and sunsets a day, which really show you just how thin our atmosphere is. But also in the daytime, it's very hard to actually actually spot any signs of habitation on, on Earth. Um, through a lens, obviously you can, through a camera lens or a telescope, but with a naked eye, it's just one big geological feature and you get to, to, to appreciate the planet in a different way, in a, in a way that you haven't seen it before. At nighttime, that's very different. At nighttime, it comes alive with cities and lights and you get to see the pattern of, of human migration. But it really, just being able to appreciate the beauty of our planet in so many different ways, the, the scale of the weather systems, the aurora borealis and australis, um, absolutely phenomenal. The first time I looked out was a very big wow factor, obviously, <laughs> and then you see the planet um, uh, and, and you kind of look at the big picture. But the longer you spend in space, the more you look at the detail. And I never got bored of looking out the window, there was always something new to see. Um, and you start to focus in on small patches, uh, maybe volcanoes that you're keeping an eye on because they might erupt in a few days or um, something like that. So it really, you know, it, it was wonderful. It was always changing, a very dynamic earth that we live, live in. And it reminded me a little bit of when I lived under the ocean for 12 days on a NASA mission. And I got to appreciate the, the marine environment that I was living in and the, and the fish and all the marine animals and how habitual they were and the kind of the patterns that developed around me underwater. It was very much like learning about planet Earth by seeing it from space. You can distance yourself and you can kind of appreciate the patterns and, and seeing the season change from winter to summer as well was fantastic. Space exploration is uh, important for a number of different reasons. I guess the ultimate reason is we will not survive on this planet forever. <laughs> That's a given. Um, we know scientifically that the, the planet Earth will not uh, support life forever. Obviously, we're talking many, many years in the future, but space exploration needs to start at some point. And in terms of learning the, the, about the knowledge as to how to explore within our solar system, and who knows at one point, maybe beyond our solar system, we have many, many challenges to overcome before we can actually even envisage human life being able to travel beyond our solar system. But it's in our genes in order to ex explore, it's in our nature to explore. So from that element, I think that we, we only learn new things by exploring, um, by, uh, and obviously by learning new things we develop. So for me, that's very important. And also the research that we're doing in space as well can't be done on Earth. It can't be done in a gravity environment. So when you go into a new environment, when you change parameters, you find things that you weren't expecting, you discover new things. Um, so again, and it goes back to bit challenging ourselves and putting ourselves in that new environment. Education is very important for a career in aerospace. We're always trying to promote STEM skills with our future generation of scientists and engineers, and that was certainly a big part of Mission Principia was to try and reach out to our younger generation. I think that what it does is a, a solid education, a solid foundation in STEM skills. It just gives you the opportunities, it opens the door in order to be able to take these or make these career choices in the future. That's not to say that you can't do that later in life. In fact, my, I myself left school at 18. I did have a maths, physics and chemistry background in A-levels, but it wasn't until 33 that I did my degree in flight dynamics. Um, so you can always acquire these skills at later in life, but um, it really is about creating opportunities for yourself. And I think in that respect, you know, education is extremely important in giving you those choices. 
My hopes for human space exploration are that we continue to work in this great international multicultural environment. Space and science has a wonderful ability to, to transcend national boundaries and language um, and, and borders and political differences as well. And I hope that continues because what we need in terms of human space exploration is a vision and a long-term plan. And that requires stability uh, and it requires um, international partnerships in order to give it that stability and that vision. The International Space Station at the moment will form as a model for how we can continue that in the future and do our missions to Mars and beyond.